Hello YouTube. Good morning. I am here at a campground in uh, Alpine, Arizona. It's called uh, Luna Luna Lake Campground. You can kind of see the lake way down there. But anyways, I got a big surprise for everybody. I finally got a truck camper. Been talking about getting a truck camper for years. I was able to trade my uh, fifth wheel for this guy. Took a little bit of a loss, but they gave me a pretty good deal. So, finally pulled the trigger on this. And uh, it's a, it's the Surus 620. So, I wanted to give a good view. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of videos like from, you know, kind of the... Uh, a distant view of the outside the way it looks so I'm gonna walk towards it here I'll cover the goods and the bads um, cover all the uh, good stuff first here with the outside it's kind of the way it looks from the front so I've only had this for maybe four days still learning it the main reason I got the 620 um, as opposed to getting the uh, uh, 820, which is the larger one, is so I can close my tailgate. So you guys could see here. This, uh, my truck, it's, uh, it's a 2020 GMC Denali, and it is a one-ton. Uh, it's obviously a single rear wheel axle, but this was the main reason I got it. So I could... I could basically drive my truck just like uh, I, I normally drive it without the camper. The only thing I have to be conscious of is uh, the side. It does stick out a little bit, right, with the side. And this is the other reason why I got this. So, voila, there's my entry step into the camper like it was made for it <laughs> so did a lot of research on which truck camper to get this is a kind of a meet in the middle with you know what I didn't want and what I really want the one I really want is the northern light but I just can't I can't swing 70 grand right now this guy was 30k I uh, said I took a little bit of a loss on my fifth wheel outside wise the goods um, so I love the way it looks this is a newer newer color this is a 2023 this is a newer color that sir started doing it's uh i think it's called charcoal uh, i love the way it looks i get tons and tons of compliments with just in the short four days i've had it asking me if it's a, a custom fit camper for the truck because i mean it really looks like it is a custom fit but again i i did my research and I, you know my math with measuring everything and um and actually, I had a really good tip from a gentleman on uh, YouTube. Uh, I came across his channel, and he has similar setup, but his truck is a Chevy instead of a GMC. But other than that, it's the same. It's the same truck. So I don't uh, I don't recall his uh, his channel name, but uh, he had some good videos of. Uh, how he was doing things and then I measured everything and I really liked the fact that I could use my tailgate as a step to get in so going back to the to the goods of the outside of the uh, of the camper it is all aluminum um, structure so the entire frame is aluminum it's using this Asdell this Asdell is an installation that it's using in the walls it's just a different type of uh, composition for installation the um, Aldi is a heating, that's the heating system. So this guy is not, does not have a furnace. It's using a hydronic um, heat system. So think, uh, just think radiant heat, right? Radiator, and it's using a glycol um, chemical to, uh, to heat the truck. And that's what heats the truck. There's a monitor board in there. This, that, um, the Aldi system is out of uh, Sweden, so when you go into the monitor board inside, it's a metric. You have to change it to English, and 
a lot of other things are just a metric, which is fine. I, what I do for a living, I live in the, in the metric world versus Imperial. So that will heat the truck and also give you hot water um, storage wise and outside cubbies. Uh, I love these windows. The windows, um, they secure with four points inside. So they really have a tight seal for water or even, you know, when it gets cold and it's, they're so easy to operate. Um, I, I love, love those windows. It is warm right now. So, and, and this is, this is awful because I'm almost at 9,000 feet and it's probably 90 degrees right now. This is absolutely ridiculous, but um, it's the heat wave we got going on throughout the, the world. Uh, and a big part of it is in Arizona and New Mexico. So, uh, I mean, we're way, way above normal, way above normal everywhere. So right now it, it should be 70 and it's probably 90. Um, getting back to this. Um, so let me, this is a, uh, this is for the propane. It's the propane in there and there's a good amount of storage right here here's a short short power cord it's uh 30 amp <sighs> looks like that's a regulator um but yeah one propane tank i mean i guess i could get two in here and i'll i don't think there's any reason why the doors are really solid um they're plastic but they're 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 strong and they're easy to close easy to open i like that a lot And this guy does have a cassette toilet. This was the other reason why I did not get the 820. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to. At least right now, I don't want to go back to the to the world of having to go to a dump station. I mean, I, I've have over 10 years experience owning RVs. We started out with a a pop up, then we rented one, and then we rented one again, and then we had a bumper pull, and then we got the fifth wheel. I'm tired of to I'm tired of towing something big and I'm just tired of the hassle of going to dump stations and this is easy. Um, you can call it the black gold <laughs> black gold tank. Um, so it has a flush in there. I'll talk about that more when I go inside. The toilet has a normal flush with water. Um, it has a uh, uh, like a, like a uh, like a little blast gate. <laughs> that uh, closes it and then you pull this out and then you, I could take it to the pit toilet and, and dump it or I dig a hole. Um, it is, is awesome. I'm gonna put this stuff in here before I forget here, this little cover. Yeah, that's all right, I'll leave it off for now. Other, other storage, this, there's a lot of storage, surprisingly amount of storage down here. <clears throat> So this goes, this is plumbing access, but it goes way back in here. So I, I have my, my boots in here. I have some, some feet, some rubber uh, pads for uh, dismounting. I was having trouble closing that earlier, but I'll leave it open. This is, uh, this is for your, uh, your gray tank uh, drain, you know, cause this, this is the black tank. So it doesn't have, it just has a freshwater tank. And the capacities are rough, roughly 2020, I believe. I think the gray is a little larger. So it's a 20, it's um, 20 gallons of fresh water and then roughly 20, uh, you can dump 20 of that into a gray tank. And then again, getting back to the dump stations, dirty water, I hook a hose up and just dump it out here, right? I mean, it's just dirty water. It's not killing the environment or anything like that. So uh, let's see. Oh, not a system. So this guy has, same Nauta system that my fifth wheel has and this is awesome I love this thing I tried this sprayer this morning um, so this sprayer can go all the way out it shouldn't should be bleeding off the water pressure I have the water pump off I'll have to bleed that out here before I go um, so yeah that is that is fantastic I don't know where I fill at I'll have to figure it out I, I mean I know there's a city water but I don't know if filling my fresh water tank if I could do that with just a jug or if I need a hose. Uh, let's see, continuing on the exterior. Yeah, I love the way it looks. Oh, it, has an, it has an awning. That awning is freaking awesome. I don't want to take it out right now because I'm running um, off the batteries. So this does have um, solar panels on top. 
it's uh, I believe they're they're uh, 200 200 uh, 200 watt solar panels on top and that seems to keep everything charged really good and I'll touch on the bads here I just wanted to stay on the good for now the awning light is amazing um, obviously if I took the awning out with on the truck it's gonna be really high so that would only be really beneficial if I if I dismounted and then everything would be lower to the ground which I will do with a with a big trip um, this is for the Aldi system this is a, a vent and it has some 110 here if you're connected uh, shore power the jack systems work good um, I saw them when they were using it it has a remote control then you could you can do each individual jack or all four at once so you could you really essentially level your trailer with the jacks i i'm, I'm not going to ever get into that i'm just going to try to find the levelest surface i can and then i'll use some uh leveling blocks on my truck i don't really want to mess with that so uh let's see let me put this away so it doesn't blow oh and this is the other reason why I didn't get the 820 or just a larger camper. So this uses the ratchet system and it goes to your tie down points um, in the truck here. This trailer is only 1500 pounds dry. So this, this one is probably similar to the Scout Olympic if I had to compare it to another one. But I, I love that it just ratchets right here. With a larger uh, truck camper, hang on, I'm gonna and that call with the larger uh, truck camper you have to get what they call fast guns they go on the outside of this and those are I, I've heard they're around three grand and then if I went with a larger trailer camper I'd also have to get airbags I do not have airbags installed it seems to be good handling fine the way it is however um, on the next trip I am gonna bring my motorcycle um, I'm gonna be getting a new rack, and I don't know if I'm gonna put it in the back or the front. It may balance out better if I put it in the front, um, but if I do that, it's gonna to have to be my, my little Honda. My KTM would have to go on the back. And then obviously, if I, if I put a motorcycle in the back, I can't access the camper as I'm traveling, you know, so you can maybe down the road look out to a, look into a, a swing, swing out kind of a, uh, receiver hitch carrier so that's the outside um, the bad on the outside I, I really don't have anything other than I wish there was more uh, storage I wish there was more storage capacity it does have a, 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 a LP connect here for if you wanted to connect gas grill so what I've noticed right away the trailer is not quite centered in the bed but I just wanted to point out there is I don't know if you guys could see that there's a ton of storage in here ton ton so they just made a uh, makeshift platform I'm, I'm going to build a nice one with a rubber mat and I really need to step back and think about when I build that I'm gonna do a torsion box design that way it's it's super lightweight but strong um, I, I've been doing woodworking all my life so I'm, I'm pretty pretty good at that so um i uh i need to think about how i build it to where i could utilize this as storage i know on the scouts they have a uh, storage uh they call them like runner rails that go here but I, I i don't need to do that if i'm gonna if i can put everything in here for example just gas cans right gas roto packs just slim even a jerry can of a gas can and water if i could somehow get it in here and just store it here because i'm gonna have to bring extra water extra gas for my motorcycle um and just other things right i just i need to uh, think about how i build that and i'm gonna look into the so in the overlanding world it's just man they're they're doing such really cool innovative storage designs too so i'm gonna look into i know they do make a inner storage box for this but that wouldn't work because of the ratchet strap so i um, I'll figure something out and I think it'll it'll come out nice so that was the only gripe I just wish that it had more I wish it had you know more little bigger storage cubby on the outside um, I am gonna have to get a generator I well I have I have one but it's it was for our fifth wheel and it's 
way too big to bring with this guy. So I'm, I'm gonna probably look into the one of the little Hondas. Um, there, there's just so many. Uh, I, I really need to educate myself on which one to get in terms of size and and you know fuel capacity, you know the load, all all that. I mean, yeah. So I need to do my homework on that before I I get one. It does have a backup camera. Oh, that's another thing. So my no, all my <laughs> my camera system on this truck works exactly like it did when the camper was not installed. And the main camera I use for any kind of parking, it's called a top-down view. It's a top-down view of my truck, and that's what I use for parking with without that's what I've always used. And I thought for sure it wouldn't work because of the camera system was going up. Uh, so honestly, I don't know how that camera system is, is still working. I know a lot of it is tied into the tailgate um, as far as the connections with the relays and stuff like that. That's what I've heard. So that, that you know, kept the connection met, but I, I don't know how that top-down view is still working with the truck camper. That it, it is it is it's amazing. So I got so lucky with that. So I'm able to, to park this just like I parked it without the truck camper. And that's kind of what I was after. I was just tired of not being able to pull into a gas station like, you know, like a normal truck would or park and wh whatever you have it, right? I'm just, I'm just done with that. There's a trade-off with that, obviously. So it's smaller. I think that was it on the outside. It does have a, uh, they call it a stargazer window front that window does not open on the 820s it does oh before i forget so having a problem maybe you guys could help me out with this you guys that have a similar truck or or truck camper the running lights are not coming on when it's connected um and the guys uh kind of backing up i got this in mesa tom's camper land they're they're okay at least right now i don't want to say they're good or bad I'm kind of in the middle of the road with them right now for other reasons that I won't speak about. But um, they did some troubleshooting and uh, everything works except the running lights on the camper. So I believe it's a seven pin. I, I did some quick uh, voltage check. I checked their work and everything they did was accurate. I checked all the fuses, the continuity was good on everything. And, and then I checked voltage at my at my my output of my pins here and everything was good but the run it's the running lights are not coming on so when i go into the interface in the truck to turn on to connect trailer via it doesn't matter what trailer right it's just sending a signal to connect the trailer it's saying trailer not found so it they're thinking and i think they're onto something was they're thinking it's tied into the brakes right so the brakes it doesn't have that it doesn't have that closed loop of of the, um, the the feedback of the of the voltage from the brakes talking back to the computer so it's confused but it's still it's still charging the batteries it's running the fridge um like i said i checked their work so yeah it's doing all that but it's the running lights aren't coming on so i came across another video of of where a gentleman similar setup and he he uh he had to add a relay so I, I, I don't think that's the issue. I think I'm going to have to get an adapter to my, to my connector here to essentially trick it, you know, to, to, close, to close that brake, to close that brake circuit so it, it thinks that there's a, uh, a connection being made. I tried all different things. I even switched to my tow mode. I increased my brake gain uh, inside. And I could, from in the inside, the interfaces, all the interfaces of the truck, I couldn't figure it out in the inside. I don't know. <laughs> so they said, take it to the dealer and it may get to that point, but I'm going to do some more research. If you guys know of, uh, if that's all I need is an adapter here, I'll show you. I believe this is a seven pin. That's my, that's the pin from the trailer. How many is that? One, two. Uh, yeah seven with the center one 
you guys know of any solutions with that, please let me know. I know this video is getting kind of long. Uh, let me go inside, do a quick tour. So that's kind of the good and the bad with the outside. But the inside, unfortunately, there's a lot of uh, bad, but it's stupid, it's stupid stuff. Um, and what I mean by stupid stuff is it's just the materials they chose. The uh, you could see here, it's just so all the all the it's not wood, but all the wood in here is MDF. It's medium MDF is medium density fiberboard. All your your kitchen cabinets now are going. They're all switched over to the MDF world for everything. It's 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 a durable material. It's a million times better than particle board. However, on the edges here, they're just gluing a plastic um, strip, which is to act like a veneer, but it's not even a veneer. It's just plastic. So you can. So that is stuff like that. Is I'm noticing little things are just starting to fall off in here. That's the only thing that that's kind of bugging me. The reason I got this one, because I was looking at the Scout, is the bed. So this is a north-south bed. Um, the Scouts are primarily east-west, and then they have this slide-out thing. And I just, I didn't like this. So I believe this is a RV uh, queen. It's not a full-size queen. My, my wife and I aren't, aren't big people. We're pretty average size. She's a really tiny little petite thing. Um... And I'm, I'm working on my diet to get back to uh, sub 200 to get back into the 190. So I'm like 205 right now with my, my weight. Speaking of that, um, with my shoes on, I'm a little over six feet, maybe a six and a half, six feet and a half, six, 6.5. Uh, so I got plenty of room here for the ceiling. So uh, if you guys, the taller guys, if you're concerned about that, I would say ugh, roughly the ceiling is, let me just put my hand there. Let's see, that's roughly probably six, five, six, six. Uh, this you're gonna hit your the air conditioner, you're gonna hit your head on first. So, I may, yeah, I got plenty of head, uh, headroom in here. Uh, the mattress is awful in this. They're using a they call it a Froley system, and this is just like a this is kind of mimicking a box screen. But this mattress is so freaking, I mean, it felt like I was sleeping on a board last night. Normally I like a stiff, firm mattress, but this is this is absolutely ridiculous. It was awful. I mean, it was hurting me to sleep on my side. I don't I don't ever that doesn't ever happen. So I'm gonna have to fix this and maybe take this thing completely off and just and put a uh, a memory foam, a thick memory foam mattress up here. I don't know. Um have to be careful with that because I don't want it to get too high here because these cubbies, these are nice cubbies. It has cubbies here. That thing back there is a pop-up uh, USB charger. It has lights, like a little light back there. There's a stargazer window. Like I mentioned earlier, I love these windows. They, they have a lot, a lot of uh, cross ventilation in them. This is a screen. This is a blackout. You can use, you can use them together, kind of like I'm using there. Still get airflow and privacy. Uh, it's a lagoon table. This table, you know, moves around. I'm sure you guys have seen lagoon tables. And then it drops down. And then this area can be made into a, a bed. So that's what I'll have to do with the dog. I'm going to try putting him right here. Um, I think he'll be fine right here. He's about 80 pounds. So I think he'll be cozy here. That way I don't have to mess with the table. The table can come completely out. And you could take it outside. Storage down there, a little bit of storage, a little bit of storage. Um, cooktop, this is just a simple gas cooktop, little sink. Control panel, so control panel. I cannot believe they took this away. There is no battery indicator anywhere on this camper. I mean, how dumb is that? I realize it's just more or less an idiot light, but I mean, come on, really? I mean, you need some something to tell you how your if your batteries are low. So, <laughs> I didn't bring a generator because I didn't want to take too much stuff on this trip. So, at about five in the morning, guess what started going off? My CO2 detector. Like any CO2 detector on any RV, if your battery gets critically low. That thing is going to chirp and beep loud. And I was ready to just cut those wires because I was so pissed off. I just took a breath and then I just ran my truck for about 
uh, 15 minutes. And then by then the sun was coming out and uh, hitting the solar panels and charging it. But I got to get this electrical system figured out, meaning the batteries are under here. I had two, uh, I have two Optima blue top batteries in parallel that I had them connect, but I, I need to connect a, uh, a voltmeter with a, a current draw reading and I'm going to, so maybe it is better because I, now I can connect my own and connect a nice one and just mount it. I don't know, there on the wall, you know, with the wire to the battery. This is for the heating system here for the Aldi heating system and it's all the vents. You can see it. And any, anywhere you see that is going to be where your, uh, your radiator is. And it's using the glycol and cooking through there. And that's what gives you your heat. The fridge. I had some issues with the fridge, but I think I got it figured out. This is a 12 volt fridge. This is exclusively um, a 12 volt fridge. So let me see. So I had some issues with this guy not getting cold at all. And what I found out, um, if you're running off batteries, and this they had they had this maxed out to seven. The freezer was kept working, but the fridge stopped cooling. And I think why is what happened is the current draw for the for the uh, compressor was too high. I don't have I didn't have enough juice from my batteries. To, in layman's terms, I don't have <laughs> enough juice for the batteries to to. Uh, to get the fridge cold at least that's what i was thinking because lowering it it's it's working better now so i i still i need to research that and understand that this is kind of a sophisticated fridge it has i read some of the troubleshooting guides and one of them said if in that scenario if your freezer is working and your and your fridge is 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 not cold then the ventilation could be uh blocked so i still need to research that a little bit it has a uh exhaust fan here for if you're cooking and fumes all my cooking is going to be outside um and this guy I, I did cook a steak here last night because i just didn't bring anything but little baby microwave it is small but i mean so i i mean i still even with the the stupid edge veneer coming off i really like this camper inside i really do the air conditioner blows crazy crazy cold when you're connected to shore power because it's such a small space it's um it gets this thing i 